for a quick follow up on last week's live stream about the path method. Last week we talked about the root assessment and how crucial it is that we don't miss that. And today I want to just go in and share you guys share with you guys a little bit of an insider's view of how we actually coach our clients with opening up communication. And we do it in a way that helps pull your spouse towards you rather than pushing them further away. And this works even if, you know, they're wanting a divorce, even if they're completely checked out, even if you're talking about separation, even if there's an affair going on. So I want to give you guys some real examples from some of our clients. Names have been changed, but I want to see, is that something you guys are interested in? Let me know in the comments. Something I haven't done yet before, but I got some of these examples from one of our coaches, Kieran, and thought that'd be pretty cool to do. Awesome. Yeah. Good to see you, Shannon. All right, cool. So as we go into opening up communication, we always want to make sure that we don't make some of these really big mistakes, which either ends up backfiring or is just completely ineffective. So let's go into a couple of those mistakes and then I'll show you guys some of those examples. So instead of guessing at what to say, instead of assuming that you know what to say, you know, if your partner's saying, that's it, I'm done, it's over, there's nothing you can do, or you're worried about trust issues, right? So what we do is we coach you on exactly what to say and how to say it as you learn how to do these things yourself so you get your spouse's attention right away. All right, remember the PATH method is all designed to get your spouse's attention as fast as humanly possible. Because if you're in that kind of situation and that's where 95% of our clients start, right, then time is not on your side. And so we can't afford to waste time guessing at what's gonna work or assuming that we know, or sometimes we even freeze, right? Because we're afraid, so we don't, we end up doing nothing out of fear. So instead of doing that, we'll coach you on exactly what to say. And I'll give you guys some examples here of what that actually looks like. Sound good? All right, so here is a real text that one of our clients got. And let me know, put in the, in the comments here, how would you respond to this text if this was your spouse? Now this may not apply to your situation, and so if it really doesn't, then put in the comments here, what do you think, how would most people respond to this text, okay? So Sharon tells her husband, I told you it's over. You should just move on. Stop trying to make it work. Sound familiar? How many of us have been told that, right? Yeah, a lot of us, right? And so how would you respond? How do you think most people would respond? Go ahead and leave it in the comments, especially those who are watching live. Thanks for joining me. I know I just popped in here unannounced. <laughs> so how do you how would you respond to this? Some of you are like, um, okay, well then I'm done, right? There's nothing else I can do. She says it's over. Maybe she's right. Maybe I should just stop trying to make it work. How many of us would go into like begging or pleading, right? Please give me another chance, right? Well, here's how most of the clients um, we see, how much most, most people are responding until they are coached by us on how to actually reply to this. So this is what a common mistake would be, right? I know what you said, but I just need you to listen. Please hear me out. I love you. I want to fix this. I know it can work. Now, that doesn't sound so bad on the surface, right? You're wanting to fight for your marriage. You love this person. You want them to give you another chance. Yeah. Audrey says, I haven't received that type, but I'm sure I would be upset and try harder. Yeah. Thank you, Audrey. And so, yeah, so it might not be exactly what you're experiencing yourself, but the principles kind of apply, right? across the board. And I'm going to give a couple different examples. So yeah, it's that whole going into begging, into pleading, please don't go, please give me another chance, right? Kind of that bit of desperation, even if you feel like you're doing it in a positive way. Um, I know I felt like this, like I'm going to fight for my marriage. I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make him come back to me, right? all those different things. And so it's crucial that we learn how to do it the right way. So while this isn't like wrong or bad, the bottom line is, is it's a common mistake because it's just not very effective. It's ineffective because if they're already saying it's over and you're still pushing them to give you another chance to let you talk with them, you know, I know it can work. That's only going to do what? I know you guys are good students here. You've been following us for a while. You know what we teach, right? It's going to push them further away. Make sense? So if you already know you don't want to do something and someone's telling you, please do it, or you need to do it, what do we do? We put up resistance. We dig on our heels. We pull further away. And your spouse is going to do the same thing. Make sense? All right. So here is what our coach 
told this client of what to send their spouse, okay? So what to send her in this example. Yeah, exactly, Audrey, push them away. You're like an A plus student here. <laughs> awesome. So this is like inside view of exactly what we coached her on how, on what to say, or him, sorry, him on what to say to her. I know it's kind of small, it's probably even smaller on Facebook, so it might be kind of hard to see, but this is how we would coach you on exactly what to tell this, you know, tell your spouse if you got this kind of text. Or even if it's an in-face conversation, the principles apply as well, right? So here's the text that Sharon sends her husband. I told you it's over. You should just move on. Stop trying to make it work. And this is what we coached our clan on what to say. I know that for you, the relationship is over and that you would like for me to move on. But I think I'm having a hard time accepting that because there are some things that I still don't quite understand. Would you be willing to have one conversation about this and answer some specific questions to help me get some clarity. I believe this may also help me to better understand your perspective. I want to show you respect here. I'm just struggling with how to do that right now. So what is effective to you about this? I want to break it down and dissect it just a little bit. First of all, we coach them on how to validate their spouse right? Validate them that I know for you, the relationship is over and that you would like for me to move on. So you're validating where they're coming from. You're striving to give understanding to their perspective. And then you voice what you're concerned about. I'm having a hard time accepting that, right? I still don't quite understand. And then a no pressure invitation follows. Would you be willing to have one conversation about this? Okay. So in this case, it was appropriate to ask for one conversation, because if it was just, would you be willing to talk about this? That would be overwhelming to our client's spouse, and they would never agree to that. But if we define clearly that we want to have one conversation about this, then it's not daunting, right? And there's no pressure there. It's just an invitation. And answer some specific questions to help me get some clarity. So here, you're showing what you need and what you're asking for, and that they can help you get this. I believe this may also help me to better understand your perspective. Again, it's always in the path process about understanding their perspective first, taking the pressure off and increasing that understanding. And then going again to reiterate, I want to show you respect here. I'm just struggling with how to do that right now. So there's a bit of vulnerability, there's a bit of openness as well as reiterating the point that we want to show them respect. We aren't trying to push them to do something they don't want to do. So can you see the contrast between this kind of really normal kind of response, just a very reactive, normal kind of, you know, we get into fear and so we tend to push or demand or, or freeze, right? And get into begging or pleading. It's a very normal reaction, but you see how that would push them further away versus this type of response, whether it's via text, on the phone, or in person, right? It doesn't really matter. The principles apply. It's still communication that is taking the pressure off, increasing understanding. Which of these do you think is going to encourage them to actually have a conversation with you? Which of these will actually encourage like open dialogue and make your spouse feel safer to open up? And when you have a good, safe, open conversation there, then do you think that they will be more willing to have more good open conversations in the future, right? So this is just one example. Let's go to another one because I know some of you are like, that doesn't sound like my situation at all. So for those especially dealing with affairs with trust issue, okay? This is another uh, text that our client received, not the same one, different one, from his wife. I saw you with another woman after work. You keep saying you're not cheating, but I don't believe you. So let me know in the comments. How would you respond to this? Yeah, how would you respond? What do you think most people respond? How do you think most people respond to this? This, this attack, right? This attack text that you get, I saw you with another woman after work, you keep saying you're not cheating, but I don't believe you. Yeah, we tend to get defensive, right? Or we just say, forget it, you keep not trusting me and so it's over. And maybe if we were in the position where we are having an affair, but this is still how they're approaching us, we would tend to get into the defensive uh, situation there, right? Yeah. And so here is what most people would say. Okay, there's a couple different examples here. The first one is, you know, that defensive, exactly, Audrey. 
ding, ding, ding. That's what I say with my toddlers all day long when they do something good. <laughs> so you got the happy bell. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> all right. So our client gets this text here from Candace. I saw you with another woman after work. You keep saying you're not cheating, but I don't believe you. Okay. Yeah. Erica says, I have no idea what the heck you're talking about, right? Defensive. You're trying to protect yourself. You're trying to let them know that this is wrong if it is wrong. And if it is true, then there's a different way we go about that as well. But in this instance, there's not an affair happening and she's just kind of accusing him. Okay. So here's some common mistakes, some common ways that people would answer this. Just like Erica said, I have no idea what the heck you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. This was my coworker. You're always accusing me of cheating. One day I might just do that. Right. You just get so mad. You're like, forget it. I can't even like, you don't even trust me. So maybe I just should anyway. Right. That's a really common answer. Or now these are not the actual text messages, right? These are just a couple different answers I put here in my little fake text creator thing that I had a lot of fun with. <laughs> I was playing around with it. I'm like, I think I should, I, I think I should send one of these to my husband. Not one of these, but a fake text just for a practical joke. But anyway, so here's another example of what people commonly reply with. That's my friend. We've talked about this before. You can't tell me what to do. So please stop accusing me just because I'm not doing what you say. Okay. Or another one. When exactly did you see me with another woman? <laughs> all right. So all of these again are going to be ineffective. They will backfire and they will not get you the good result that you want. It will cause your spouse to continue to distrust you, to continue to disbelieve you, and it will create a wider and wider gap between you. Okay. So an example of the correct response that we coached this client through was this one. So the text from Candace says, I saw you with another woman. You keep saying you're not cheating, but I don't believe you. Right. And then here's the correct response that we coached our client and we told him exactly what to say. Okay. In light of us having talked about this before, I can see how you might have the idea that I am not being honest when I say I'm not cheating. Obviously, this is not someone you know, and I did not tell you I was meeting up with friends after work, including this particular woman. So I do understand. However, I don't think accusing me is the right way to go about it. Maybe we should talk about the freedom to be that I need and what you need to feel secure in our marriage. So let's dissect this one a little bit. What do you notice about this kind of response from more of like a principle standpoint that works really well. Again, we're gonna to go to those same things, understanding, validating, right? I can see why, where is it? I can see how you might have the idea that I'm not being honest when I say I'm not cheating, right? So I do understand. So this is an instance where he did have an affair. They're working to restore trust, but she's obviously having some hard time with it. So he's validating her feelings. He's understanding and having empathy for her situation. Okay. He is saying though, accusing me is not the right way to go about it. So right here is an example that we would give of a healthy boundary. Okay. And then again, a no pressure open invitation here. We should talk about the freedom to be that I need. So he's, he is articulating to her and communicating to her what he needs and then what you need to feel secure in our marriage. So we're talking about meeting both partners needs. So do you see how in this second example, all the pressure is off, the defensiveness is off, like there's no defensiveness and um, perpetuating that cycle, right? Of more and more disbelief and more and more anger about not being believed and all those things that happen here. What happens is that she is going to feel understood and validated while he is also holding firm to a healthy boundary that's gonna help his wife and him to both feel safer and secure as they work to restore trust, okay? So here's a couple inside examples, and I want you to think about your situation and think about how, you know, I'm, I'm with you, like we are not taught how to respond to our spouse, but how are we responding to our spouse? right? It's usually like in the moment, responding emotionally and saying things that we often regret later, or we think we might think about it for a little while and think about it maybe even strategically, but it's still ineffective because we simply aren't taught how to communicate. We aren't taught what to do when your spouse accuses you of cheating or what you to do when they say, I want out, what to do when they say, I love you, but I'm and not 
in love with you, right? All of these different things. We aren't taught how to handle that, but they are things that we can learn. And so what we do here at High Thrive Coaching is show you exactly what to say. Literally, sometimes like this, word by word, what to text them so that you don't inadvertently push them further away. You actually draw them closer to you. And so with path coaching, we effectively uncover exactly what's going to make your spouse notice that they want to be with you and that the belief they have about you is not true and is not what's going to happen in the future, that they build on that curiosity, right? So we create this curiosity of, wow. Okay. Let me go back real quick, because if you've been doing most of these mistakes, right? And all of a sudden you start communicating this way. Is it going to get your spouse's attention? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments. Is this making sense? If you communicate this way, would it feel different to your spouse? Say they text you tonight and you respond in a completely different way than you ever have before. Are they going to notice? Most likely, yes. Even if they don't notice the first time, what if you communicate this way for a week or two weeks? Will they notice by then? Yeah, they will absolutely notice. So what happens is we create some curiosity and Candace is saying, wow, there's something really different about Bill. What is it? What is he doing? Yeah, Brenda says, yes, exactly. Nicole says, yes. Awesome. So this is making sense. Good. And so when we start to communicate in different ways that validate them, that help them feel understood, that take the pressure off while also expressing our needs and wanting to meet their needs, we open up communication more and more. And they're going to notice. They're going to say something's different about Will. Something's different about Erica. Something's different about Nicole and Brenda. What is it? Then when we've created that curiosity, now we're going to build on that to create attraction. Wow. I'm really feeling understood here. I'm really feeling like they care about me and there's no pressure. And that's going to draw them naturally to you. And what happens is it's going to make your wife, make your husband notice immediately these changes. So instead of working on yourself for years and hoping that they notice, we're going to make them notice. And we will guide you on exactly how to do that in your specific situation. Sound good? All right, cool. So next steps for you. If this resonates with you, if you're like, yeah, I want you guys to coach me on how to handle these communication challenges. I want to uncover why they believe this about me and get them back in love with me as fast as humanly possible and feel safe and secure again. Then I encourage you um, for a short time here, we're just opening up a few spots this week to do a free call with us with our marriage vision specialist. Okay. These are calls where you're going to be coached on exactly what to do next, given your specific situation. Our approach, if you've been following us for a while, right, is not cookie cutter. We custom tailor it to exactly what you're going through and make sure at the end of the day, you get that exact result that you want with your husband or your wife. Because to us, family is sacred and we know how much it means to you. Going about it on your own and trying and working so hard and doing 10 million different things like I did, and I'm sure you're doing that too, is exhausting and it's ineffective and it leads to burnout, which then leads to inevitable divorce. So that's not what we want. We want to start doing the right actions at the right time so you start seeing real results in your marriage. And then when you work on that, just a baby step after a baby step, right? You're going to see positive momentum in your life and that is going to create really encouragement and energy as you see them coming closer to you. So I will put this over here into the chat. Silent treatment, Audrey. Yeah. So when they're not responding to you at all, and there's a lot of stonewalling, then we go into exactly how to open that up. Um, with whatever communication you do have, we show you how to get that going in a good direction. So there is the URL. I encourage you to book a free call with your marriage vision specialist while we have a few spots open. And uh, I thank you and honor you and look forward to having you um, in the coaching if that resonates with you, but more, more importantly, that you have a happy, thriving marriage. All right, appreciate you guys. My heart, my love, my appreciation goes out to you. And we'll talk again soon.